Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome all back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food Bible Study Channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father and Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through his Spirit of Truth, also known as the Comforter and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. Because truly without him, like Jesus said over here in John 15 and at the end of verse 5, but without me ye can do nothing. So family, without God, we can't be provided for. God is the one that's providing everything for us. He's given us eternal security. He's given us salvation. Through his son, Jesus Christ. So without him, we can't do nothing. That's why we need to always look to our creator for everything. All right. So let's open up this Bible study with Psalms 145. And let's read what's applicable to this Bible study that we're going to be dealing with today. Psalms 145 verses 15 through 21. It says the eyes of all wait upon thee. And thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is not unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing and application of his holy word to our lives in Jesus name. Amen. So once again, family, peace and love to everybody that's tuning in now and later. I pray that the almighty father in Jesus name is keeping us in perfect peace, blessing us with good health and everything else that's good that comes from God. So what we're going to deal with today is a topic that the Lord Jesus Christ sent his Holy Spirit and inspired me to do. And that is God is our father and he provides everything we need. And we're going to take a look at just that, because, you know, when we truly love God and we do us pleasing to him and we obey him he's our father all right so you know yes god he created everybody but everybody that's created is not serving god everybody that's created they don't call on the father in jesus name all right so although he's the father of the whole creation you have some people that choose another father and that's none other than satan the devil so you know, we are who we obey. We we become, uh, uh, you know, accustomed to people's rules and regulations. Satan don't have no rules, but God does, though. All right. So, you know, uh, whoever your master is, that's who's your that's who your servant is. All right. So if Jesus Christ and his father is our father, well, then guess what? They are father. But if we obey in sin. Guess who our father is? Satan, the devil. But let's take a look at this. Let's get over here. We're going to take a look at two aspects of this Bible study lesson today. What we're going to take a look at, we're going to first uh, look at over there in uh, Psalms 50. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to take a look at verses 10 through 12. Psalms 50. And we're going to start this lesson out over here because we're going to look at the physical aspect of how God provides for us. And then even in a spiritual aspect god is the one that's providing comfort for us he's the one that's providing wisdom counsel knowledge and direction he's providing good health i mean the lord is providing everything for us all right and he's our father so he knows what we need before we even ask him but guess what we need to still put in our prayer lord i, I trust you can you do this for me because that's an exhibition of your faith. You showing God, Lord, I know you're going to do this for me. If it be according to your will, can you bless me above and beyond what I can ask, think, and even imagine to ask? According to Ephesians 3 and 20 through 21. All right. But let's take a look at this right now. Let's get into this Bible study. 
Psalms 50. <clears throat> so we're going to look at two aspects. We're going to look and see how God provides physically. This is why we don't need to worry about nothing. We do our part and whatever we ain't got no control of, don't worry about it. Don't get anxiety and all of that. We're going to get, we're going to look into this. But let's take a look. Psalms 50. Let's read verses 10 through 12. And right after this, we'll take a look at 1 Chronicles 29, verses 10 through 14. All right. So that'll give you enough time to flip your Bible there or, you know, start uh, uh, maneuvering the pages so that you can be there when we turn. But we're going to give you a little bit of time to turn there. So Psalms 50, <clears throat> excuse me, verses 10 through 12. And let's see what the Lord said about this. Everything belongs to him. He said, for every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. God owns every animal on this planet. They all belong to him. It says, I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. Every beast in the field belongs to the creator. So guess what this means? God can take these things and give them to whoever he wants to. They are his. Our heavenly father is in possession of everything. He says, if I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the world is mine and the fullness thereof. God owns this world and everything that's in it. It belongs to him. Because he created everything. So now let's go and take a look at this. Now let's match this precept up because when King David was getting all of the tools and the instruments to uh, have his son Solomon build this temple, we're going to take a look at some of the language that he used when he was making his prayer and praising God for giving him these things and for providing these things for him. Let's go and take a look at first Chronicles 29, first Chronicles 29. And let's have a look. At verse 10, we'll start it out there. First Chronicles 29 and verse 10. So <clears throat> let's read this. It says, wherefore David blessed the congregation or wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our father forever and ever. So. King David is blessing the Lord in front of the whole congregation. It says, thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Everything belongs to God. Every single thing belongs to God. Things visible and invisible. Everything belongs to him. All right. And it sounds like almost something uh, similar to the Lord's prayer. But let's continue. It says, thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. God is a great ruler. As a matter of fact, God is the world's boss. Let's continue. It says both riches and honor come of thee. So if we want any riches and honor, guess who we got to go to look for it from? God. He's the source of riches and honor. It says, and thou reignest over all. He the king over everybody. It says, and in thine hand is power and might. And in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. So if we got any strength, we need to be thanking God for that. It come from him. It says, now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. Absolutely. Let's see what else he said. He says, but who am I? And what is my people? That we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort. For all things come of thee. And of thine own have we given thee. So King David is saying, Lord, you the one that provide everything for us. And the only thing we doing is giving it right back to you. Because it's all yours. So whatever we get, family, it belongs to God. This is why we can't be selfish when we see the poor. When they out there digging in a trap. Man, give them people something to eat. If God is blessing you with it, bless the next man. Blessed is the man that considereth the poor, for the Lord will deliver him in a time of trouble. Go back and take a look at, uh, what was that, Psalms 41. All right. So now let's go and take a look at this because we see King David here saying that everything belongs to God. 
Now, let's see how we have access to these things that do belong to God, because once again, God is our father and he provides everything that we need, family. That's why we shouldn't be anxious about nothing, worried about nothing. You know, whatever the case, whatever it is we we're dealing with, God is going to equip us with what we need coming from him. OK, so now let's go and take a look at this. Matthew six. Let's go over here and look at this. And this is uh, one of the verses, you know, even when I was younger, when I was a youth in the word of God, uh, you know, when when I would lose my job or something uh, unfortunate would happen where, you know, I was in a tight situation, needing some money or whatever. These verses right here was always a, a constant reminder for me, you know, and it, it, it was miraculous because, you know, at that time, I didn't I wasn't spiritually mature enough to really, you know, grasp this concept. You know, you always worried about something, but God was really showing, man, you ain't got to worry about nothing. If you serve me and seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. So once again, we ain't got no reason to be worrying or fretting about nothing. Let God know. He know what we need before we even ask him. But let's read this. Matthew 6. Let's read Matthew 6. And let's take a look at verses 24 through 34. And uh, once again, we're going to have a little moment for the people that's reading along. We're going to let them catch up. And we're going to take a look at this. So right after this, Matthew 6 and 24 through 34. We're going to flip back over to Psalms 34. And look at verses 9 through 10. So you can write that down uh, right now if you got some time. But uh, we should be there now. Matthew 6 verses 24 through 34. And we're going to get into this. So let's take a look. Matthew 6 verses 24 through 34. And this is how you know God is our father. Right here because we serve God. Let's take a look. Matthew 6, verses 24 through 34. It says, no man can serve two masters. So you can't serve God and Satan, the devil. You got to choose one. It says, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he would hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So we can't serve God and material things. For those of us who's truly loving God, and seeking after him, look, you might have lost your job, your house, your car, whatever the case, fell on hard times. But guess what? God will provide for you. He will provide. Just continue doing what you have to do and don't give up. Don't let a temporary circumstance eliminate you from getting eternal salvation because of some temporary stuff that's going on. We can't allow that, family. Let's continue. This is why we read the word every day to get hope and be reassured in God's word. The one that created you and I and the world and everything else that's dwelling here. It says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life so you can start taking thoughts and worrying about things. So them evil thoughts that Satan is giving you, man, return the sender. I don't want it. Cast it down in the name of Jesus. Because Satan, he'll play on your insecurities. He know that you ain't, well, or, what, he knows what's going on. He know you ain't got no job or whatever the case. And then guess what he'll do? He'll start flooding your mind with all kind of doubts and all of this. But this is why we have the word to refer back to. Because the word of God eliminates those doubtful thoughts. The word of God is the one that's given us confidence and reassurance. And the one that created us. Our spiritual father. So once again, he says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? So God cares about our well-being and he knows that we have needs of these things, family, to continue living. So let's continue. He's going to make a comparison now. He's going to compare us to the little birds in the air. 
Now watch this. I don't never see them when I'm going out on my way to work. I don't see them clocking in. I don't see them swiping no time card, punching no clock. And they living good. Flying, singing around, <laughs> chilling, messing up people cars. Not a care in the world. It says, behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. These little birds don't reap nor sow and God is providing for them. You don't think God going to provide for you and you the one that was created in his image? Come on, we got to change up our way of thinking. It says, are ye not much better than they? Of course we are. Of course we are better than some birds. We were the ones that was created in God's image. It says, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Which one of us by worrying can change anything? Not one of us. Only thing that we going to do is, only thing we going to change is our, 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 our level, level of blood pressure rising. That's it, because you worrying, you anxious. You letting Satan flood your mind with all of these thoughts that's not even true. And even if something is true, pray to God and ask him to change it up or give you the strength to endure whatever it is you got to endure. Once again, it says, and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And they are beautiful. And God is going to let us know Solomon wasn't arrayed like one of these. So the beauty of the lily had more beauty than Solomon's apparel. Watch this. He's going to let us know. He says, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Because lilies of the field are very beautiful. So he said, even Solomon, his glory was not arrayed like one of these. God was the one that was clothing everybody. But he put a certain or specific beauty on some of these flowers that Solomon wasn't even compared to. So it says, verse 30, it says, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O oh, ye of little faith. This is Jesus saying this. God going to provide for us. He know we need clothes. He know we need a place to stay. He know we need food. And God is doing a magnificent job at providing everything that we need. Even giving us a bunch of other little stuff that, you know, is our creature comforts. We got a car, cell phone, can play the video game. We, we got a house that's pretty furnished. So, I mean, we got to take a look, man. We got to look at what God is doing for us as opposed to, you know, what we don't have and what we want. We need to start looking. Is this something that we need? Because God is providing everything that we need. And everything that he given us is a gift, family. Let's take a look at this. So he said, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. God know what we need before we even ask him. He said he know what we need before we even ask him. Think he ain't going to provide for us? Those of us that got children. You know, we looking at them. We know what they need before they even ask us. And we already making preparations, most of us, to get what they need. We taking care of them. You think our father in heaven ain't going to take care of us? And he's a much better father than we can ever be. You got to know, you got to trust in God's word, family. Whatever's going on, just hold on to your faith and let patience have her perfect work. God always work it out. Verse 33, it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh, so this is how we unlock getting those things that we need. Seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seeking to be pleasing to the father in Jesus name. This is how we get access to those things that we want. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And this is a true story, family. If you seeking God and his righteousness, 
God going to make sure he take care of us one way or another. Believe that in some some parts of the Bible, I can show you right now where God said he'll he'll take the things from the wicked and give it to the ones that's righteous. I could show you that. But let's continue. It says. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. Now, you know, I, it, it, now it's, it's the Holy Spirit is just putting it on my mind. I got to show you. I, I'm, I'm trying to read past it, but I, I can't ignore what the Holy Spirit putting on my mind. Let me just show you since I said it, because I, I, I never we're going to take a look at uh, Job 27. So those of you that's following along, taking notes, write this down on your notebook or on your uh, piece of paper. Uh, Job 27, just to show you, because I'm not one of them people that just be talking and, you know, not backing up with what the scriptures, what I'm saying. So I just want to show you something. This is Job 27. Job 27 and the precept that matched with this is that uh, Proverbs 13 and 22. But let's take a look at this. Job 27 and verse 17. Talking about a wicked man. Look at this. It says he may prepare it or let me just let me go up. Verse 16. It says, though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. And the innocent shall divide the silver. So God be stacking up the, he be allowing the wicked to stack up their treasures so they can give it to the righteous. Prime example of this, look at what happened when the children of Israel came up out of Egypt. They spoiled the Egyptians. Now, let me just match up this precept once again. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13, because I can't ignore it. I got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 13, verse 22. Proverbs 13 and verse 22. So write this down. Proverbs 13 and 22. And then right after this, we're going to go back to the uh, Bible that's laying on the, on the desk. We'll take a look at uh, verse 34. Matthew 6 and 34. But right now, Proverbs 13 and 22. It says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. You out here sinning, you're laying up that treasure for somebody else that's going to put it on. They're going to be righteous with it. God got that ability to do this because all of this stuff belong to him. Who you think allowing the wicked to prosper? God is allowing this. And he got a certain time for everything. If he wanted to, if God wanted to, he can put in your bank account right now, three billion or uh, X amount of dollars. It don't matter. All this stuff belong to God. But see, the question is, what are we going to do with it? Are we going to live after what thus said the Lord? Are we going to use this money for a righteous cause? Which those of us that love God, absolutely. Money don't change nothing. All right. Only thing money do is make sure that we can live comfortable. We got enough to, you know, stay out of poverty, so on and so forth. But anyway, let's continue. Let's go back to the Bible that's laying on the desk. Matthew 6. I just wanted to match that precept up so you can see. These people that's got all of this money and stuff, don't worry about that. Because guess what? They stacking it up for the ones that's going to be righteous. You never know what God going to do. That's the mindset that we got to have. Wait for God. Matthew 6, verse 34. So now it says, take therefore no thought for the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Don't be worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. What's going to happen a day after and a day. Take things a day at a time. And this right here will eliminate a lot of the anxiety that we as human being, beings bring on ourselves because we've taken thoughts. Satan blow a thought on your mind. Yeah, you know, this going to happen. Then you start entertaining that thought. Now you a nervous wreck because you got something going on in your mind that Satan planted there. And it's not holy. Eliminate that in the almighty name of Jesus. So once again, it says, take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Let tomorrow deal with tomorrow. We ain't even got there yet. It says sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. It's enough evil in today than to be worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. 
Don't put so much on yourself. Take things a day at a time, family. All right. So once again, let's keep matching up these precepts. Psalms 34. Psalms 34. And let's take a look at verses 9 through 10. And then right after that, we'll take a look at Psalms 37. Verses 25 through 26. So Psalms 34. Verses 9 through 10. Psalms 34. Verses 9 through 10. We're going to let all of the brothers and sisters catch up with us. Psalms 34, verses 9 through 10. And right after this, we're going to skip right over to Psalms 37, verses 25 through 26. So right now, we're looking at Psalms 34, verses 9 through 10. And keep in mind, we're still dealing with the topic. God is our father and he provides everything we need. Now, let's continue. Psalms 34 verses 9 through 10. Let's read it. It says, oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. Saints are the ones that keep his commandments and keep the faith in Jesus Christ. Let's see what he said. For there is no want to them that fear him. So if you respect and fear God, there is going to be no want. There is no want to those of us that's fearing him. We're not covenant after what somebody else got. Whether it be their house, their wife, their husband, they whoever. We're not covenant after that. You know why? Because God is providing everything that we need for us. Why he providing everything we need? Because we following the solution that the Bible gave us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So let patience have her perfect work. And in due time, God is going to bless us like you couldn't even imagine with whatever it was that we wanted or needed according to his will. These are the benefits of serving the father in Jesus name. Verse 10. He said the young lions do lack because, you know, young lions, they hunting skills ain't up like that. He said, and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. So if you seeking God, you ain't going to want no good thing. And God ain't going to withhold no good thing from those of us that really love him. All right. Like he talked about over there in Psalms 84. And I'm going to just flash it on the screen. Psalms 84 and verse 11. It said, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. That's somebody that's seeking God in his righteousness. He ain't going to withhold no good thing from us. We live in witnesses of this. So now let's go and take a look at this again. One more time. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. And let's have a look at verses 25 through 26. Psalms 37. Verses 25 through 26. And let's take a look. Let's see what King David witnessed. So right after this Psalms 37 verses 25 through 26. We'll go over and take a look at Matthew 14 verses 13 through 21. We'll read that Lord willing. So let's read this. Psalms 37 verses 25 through 26. It says I have been young and now am old. So some time went by. So. Obviously, King David got some experience in this. He said, I've been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God said, I ain't not. I mean, King David said, I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God going to always provide for the ones that truly love him, family. And let's see what else he said about the righteous. He said he is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed. So if you merciful and you lending, that means God is blessing you with the means to be able to lend. And then even your seed, your children will be blessed too. Oh, come on, man. This is what come along with being a servant of God. So now let's go and take a look at Jesus. How he looked up to heaven and blessed these two fish and five loaves of bread. He is a, definitely a provider. And this was very miraculous. Ain't nothing impossible for God. Let's go and take a look at this. Man, I love how this word just be flowing like that, man. The, the Lord, he, he know what he doing. He a perfect God. And he worthy to be praised, family. Let's go and take a look at him. This is what he do. And guess what? Just in case you didn't know, this is the same God that we serve today. 
today and beyond. It's the same one. He ain't changed. Let's take a look at this. Man, don't you love God? I love how he just be doing everything for us. Showing us, providing spiritual gifts for us, providing physically for us. Ain't no God like the true and living God, family. I don't care what nobody in the world is saying. I don't care. The Bible right here, this book trump everybody else and what everybody else think. They opinions and all of that. Matthew 14. Let's take a look at verses 13 through 21. Because what we're going to do, we're going to read about how Jesus provided for this great multitude with only two fishes and five loaves of bread. This was a miracle. And God can still do this to this very day. Let's take a look. Matthew 14. We're going to read verses 13 through 21. And then right after this, we're going to go and take a look at how the Lord performed another miracle with Samson. He gave Samson water out of a jawbone of a donkey after he got done uh, slaying a thousand Philistines, I believe it was. With the jawbone of a donkey. Now let's take a look at this. I mean, we're going we gonna to stay line upon line, precept upon precept. Let's continue. Matthew 14, verses 13 through 21. Once again, another testimony to the fact that God is our father and he provides everything that we need. Now watch this. It says when Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the city. So Jesus got this uh, following. These people following him just like on uh, what was that movie? Uh, Forrest Gump. He started running and all of these people were behind him. I assume it was something like this because it was a multitude of people. It says, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. So Jesus, he loved the people. He loved the people. He had compassion on the people. It says, and it was, and when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. So he said, man, this is the desert. There ain't nothing out here. Send them away so they can go and get them something to eat. But Jesus, watch what he do. It's almost like Jesus was setting this up so that he could show this miracle. Now watch this. He's showing his power right here. It says, but Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. He said, they don't need to go nowhere. Get them something to eat. Now watch this. And they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, bring them hither to me. Oh my goodness. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the multitude or gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Oh my goodness. But did you see what Jesus did first? He looked up to heaven to the father. And blessed what he, what he was given. The two fishes and the five loaves. And what happened after that? And they did all eat. Remember this was a multitude of people. Jesus fed these people through the power of the father. Providing and blessing this. Multiplying these fishes and this bread. What a miraculous thing. Now, I truly believe this. We ain't got no other choice. God be doing things like this. But somebody that don't have no faith, they not going to believe this. But it don't matter what they believe. Like uh, Romans 3 and 3 through 4. Shall the uh, fit for... Matter of fact, I ain't even about to quote it. I'm going to just go and put it in front of the... On, on, on this camera for you. I'm going to show you this. Romans 3 and verse 3. I just want to show you this. It says, For what if some did not believe? Once again, this is Romans 3 and 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. In other words, no. Just because somebody don't believe what thus said the Lord, that don't mean it ain't true. So once again, let's read this again. Matthew 14 verse 20. It says, and they did all eat and were filled and they took up the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. So they was even able to 
have some left over out of two fishes and five loaves of bread. I mean, if this, don't y'all see God is the one that provides? It says, and they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. So it was a, about 5,000 men. And that's not including the women and the children. So God fed a bunch of people here. Once again, God is our father and he provides everything we need. He didn't send them away and, you know, y'all go and get your own things. He was the one that was providing for them. So now let's go and see something else. Let's go and look at another miraculous event. Judges. Because, you know, the children of Israel was always into it with the Philistines. And we're going to take a look at how uh, Samson, we're not going to read it, but Samson, uh, he tied uh, foxes' tails together and burnt up, uh, oh, I'm in Samuel. He had burnt up uh, the Philistines' uh, crop. And, you know, they was looking for Samson after this. And the children of Israel, some of the men of Israel, they brought him to the Philistines. All right. So you can go back and read this on your own. And Samson, he had it rough. You know, uh, Samson's father-in-law, he gave his wife to his friend. So I'm sure that was some heartbreak there. So go back and read this on your own. You know, you can read uh, th this on your own. But this is what we came for right here. We want to see this right here, how God be providing. And he do it in a, in a way that he chooses to do it. So let's take a look at this. So not only does he provide physically, God provides for us spiritually. And I pray to God in the almighty name of Jesus. Anybody that's dealing with any heartbreak, any pain, any depression, any, uh, uh, you know, lack of physical resources. I pray that just as true as the father in Jesus Christ is real. May he send his word and may he deliver every last one of us that's dealing with this type of thing in Jesus name. May he rebuke Satan out of our life and may he bless us in Jesus name. But you do know we always going to have that time when we got to be tested. All right. So once again, I pray for relief and comfort for all of the brothers and sisters that's a part of the body of Christ. As well as for all of the brothers and sisters that tune in to this bread, wine, and soul food Bible study channel. Let's take a look at this now. Judges 15. Let's take a look at verses 15 through 19. And right after that, we'll read Proverbs 2, verses 6 through 7. Because then we're going to transition over into the spiritual aspect of how God provides for us. How he gives us wisdom. How he directs our way. So he providing safety for us. I mean, God is just doing everything. And it ain't enough time in a day to sit here and praise him and thank him. But let's continue. We do good with the time that we have. So Judges 15, let's read verses 15 through 19. So let's take a look after the children of Israel had uh, fulfilled the Philistines request and bringing Samson over to them. Let's take a look and see what he did. It says, and he found a new jawbone of an ass, which is a donkey, and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. Samson slew a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. It says, and Samson said with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men, the jawbone of a donkey. He killed a thousand Philistines. Now watch this. It says, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking, they cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramoth Lehi. And he was sore thirst. I'm sure you are. For those of us that didn't been in any type of physical combat sports or a fight in general, you get real tired. Mouth be dry. Sometimes it feel like you got to vomit. But anyway, it says, and he was sore thirst. And called on the Lord and said, thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. And now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? Absolutely not. God wasn't going to let say, uh, Samson go out like that. Let's take a look and see what happened after he called on the Lord, which is our father. But God clave in hollow place that was in the jaw. And there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again and he revived. 
I ain't going to lie, fam. It ain't nothing like drinking cold water after you didn't got done working. You working out, you working in the hot sun, and you drink that cold water. Man, don't you? It's so refreshing, ain't it? Well, the same thing could be said spiritually. When we drinking water, when we spiritually famished, we start drinking the word of God. Because Jesus is that found the living waters. But anyway, you see how God provided some water out of this jawbone of the ass? Because he told God, I'm thirsty. I'm going to die from thirst and my enemy's going to come and take me away. God wasn't having that. You see this? Look at this. It said his spirit came again and he revived. Wherefore, he called the name thereof in Hakor, which is in Laha this day. Oh, my goodness. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. So we see here how God was providing for Samson. So you see what we need to do? Follow these same patterns, because guess what? We got the Bible here for our learning and our admonition. Like it talk about over there in uh, Romans 15 and 4. It said, for whatsoever things, and this is Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So these people that came before us, we can follow their blueprint on what to do and what not to do. And we can build off of that. We don't got to reinvent the wheel. Just do what thus said the Lord. Learn from other people's mistakes. Learn from what they did right and start applying the same methods and principles that they used to your life and see how your life turned out. I mean, it worked for these brothers and sisters that's in the Bible. Certainly it's going to work for us. God don't change. So now we've seen this over here, how God provided water for Samson after he put a whooping on them Philistines. Beat them down, a thousand of them, with the jawbone of a donkey. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this is this is some stuff right here, man. God be doing some miraculous things. This is why he our God. He our father. This is why we claim him as that. We ain't never ashamed of the true and living God. We love him. Now, watch this. And we make this confession publicly. We ain't sitting in no corner hiding and whispering. No, it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ and his father. And we here to glorify him. Anybody got a problem with that? Either you going to roll with God or you going to get rolled right over. It's simple as that. So now let's take a look at this. Proverbs 2. Verses 6 through 7. It says, for the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So now we're looking at the spiritual things that God be providing for us. He provides us with knowledge, wisdom, counsel, and understanding. Let's see what he said. He laying up for the righteous, the ones that trust in his only begotten son, which is Jesus Christ. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous, his word. He is giving us his word. That's sound wisdom. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He's our defense when we walking uprightly. What's teaching us to walk uprightly? The word of God. This is the doctrine that we live by. So now let's continue. Let's match this precept up. And then uh, shortly after that, we're going to let it rest. We'll continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. So let's go and take a look at James. James 1. James 1. And let's see, because we just read it out of the mouth of uh, Solomon. That the Lord is the one that gives wisdom. He laying up sound wisdom for those that really love him. So let's take a look. Let's see what he's doing. James 1. James 1. We'll take a look at verses 5 through 8. Then we'll skip down and look at verse 17. And I'm going to give you all some time to turn your Bibles there. Take your notes or do whatever you got to do. James 1. Verses 5 through 8, then we'll skip down to verse 17. And then right after that, we'll take a look at Matthew 6. And we'll read verses 6 through 8. And then we're going to close this Bible study out for the day. So James 1. Verses 5 through 8. And Lord willing, y'all are there by now. And Let's read it. James 1. Verses five through eight. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God 
that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So God ain't going to scold you or yell at you or condemn you for asking him for wisdom. He'll give it to you. He'll give it to us. It says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. So when we ask in God for something, we got to ask in faith and not be doubting. Because the moment you start doubting, well, guess what? You got your answer. You can't come to God and then, Lord, I don't know, you might do this. So you No. First of all, when we pray, we need to be asking, Lord, let whatever I'm praying, let it be according to your will. And if it's not according to your will, Lord, don't even let it come in my heart. Don't even let me ask you this because it's not according to your will. But one thing about God, the way he be working, he the one that's giving us what to ask for. And then he'll answer it. Because things that we don't know to ask for, guess what? He'll pray for us because we don't even know what we should be praying for all the time. Like you talk about over there. What was that? Uh, Romans 8 and 26, I believe it was. The spirit is uh, what's making intercession for us because we don't know uh, uh, what things we should be asking for. I believe that's it. Yeah. Yep. Romans 8 and 26. I'm just flashing this so that you all can uh, see this. But that's Romans 8 and 26. But let's continue back to James. James 1 and verse 6 once again. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. So we can't be double minded and doubting what God going to do for us. When we ask him for something, look out for it. Be on the lookout. And we need to be asking things according to his will. All right. So it says, for let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. You ain't got nothing coming if you ain't got no faith. Double minded. It says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Everything you do is going to be shaky because you double minded. You don't know what to believe. Now, watch this. Verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness. He ain't changing. He ain't flaky. He said every good gift and every perfect gift come from above. From the father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. He ain't going to turn from what he's doing, family. Now, let's continue. Matthew 6. And let's take a look at verses 6 through 8. And we're going to conclude this Bible study for today. And then we're going to continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. So Matthew 6. Let's take a look at verses 6 through 8. Matthew 6, verses 6 through 8. I'm going to give you a few more seconds to turn there. Matthew 6, verses 6 through 8. And let's read it. It says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So the things that you was asking your father for or our father for in secret. He'll bless us with these things openly. It says, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. That's like that repeat, repeating chantings and all of this, like the Hail Mary prayer and all of this stuff. When you pray, pray sincerely from the heart. And ask God, even Jesus Christ, to pray for us. Because you know if he praying for us, you know we're going to get our prayers answered. He says, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Our father know what we need before we even ask him, family. So once again, one other one other thing on this. One one other one other precept on this. One other precept. Matthew 21 and verse 22. It says, In all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So whatever we praying for, thank God in advance. And if we believe that we're gonna receive it, we're gonna get it. 
All right. So once again, that was God is our father and he provides everything we need. I hope you got some understanding in the almighty name of Jesus. Now, let's continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. This is why it's so important for us to take accountability. To confess and repent from our sins that we have committed in the sight of the Holy Father in Jesus name. Let's take a look. Proverbs 28 and verse 13. It says, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So if we confess and forsake our sins, we will have mercy, family. So now let's continue with this. Let's go over here to numbers and let's let this word rest on us. Number six. And we want this to apply to us and our household for a thousand generations for as long as we love and obey the true and living God. Let's take a look at this. Number six, verses 22 through 27. And it reads, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, on this wise, ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. And everything that we just read right here, we want this to apply to us. All of the viewers and listeners that's tuning in now and later. Every brother and sister that's a part of the body of Christ and that's truly loving the Lord. We want this to apply to us in our households for a thousand generations in Jesus name. Now, let's continue with this one other place and we're going to conclude this Bible study with this. Malachi. Malachi. Three. Malachi three. I'm sorry, y'all. These pages starting to stick together. Malachi three. Let's take a look at verses 16 through 18. Malachi 3, verses 16 through 18, it says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. And that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. And with that being said, family, we're going to let this rest on us. And may the almighty father in the almighty name of Jesus. Send his Holy Spirit. May he continue to strengthen us, bless us and keep us. I'm praying for each and every one of us. And I'm praying that the Lord Jesus Christ continue to pray for us. For as long as we call on him in truth and in faithfulness. All right. So with that being said, family, may the spirit of God rest upon each and every one of us. I love you all so much. And Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another topic out of the Holy Scriptures. Until then, peace and love in the almighty name of Jesus, family.